For them that love God, all things worketh unto good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Children, you would know this because you're blessed to be from a good family, and your parents take good care of you and come to our good school and a good church, but actually the world in which we live today is a rather wicked place, and there's a terrific amount of sinning of all different kinds going on all the time. But if we stick with God the Holy Ghost, He's the one who inspires us to see the right things and to do them. That's how we get to be holy. If we stick with God the Holy Ghost, we're able to put on our good seeing glasses. And when we wear these glasses, we do see goodness everywhere, even in the most unlikely places. Take today's saint, Rommel. He was a young nobleman of the 10th century ago lived about 10 centuries ago then, and he used to go hunting because that's what you did if you were a nobleman, you didn't have too much to do during the day. And he was tempted when he was a teenager, teenagers often are, against holy purity. Well, he knew he had to distract himself, so he would go out even more hunting. But why was that hunting? He came to love being quiet, the solitude just himself and God there in nature. He loved solitude to be by himself, and he could think important, holy kinds of thoughts. Well, one day he was pulled out of his holy thoughts by his father, because back then, if you had a fight with somebody, if you disagreed about something, the way you would settle it, you wouldn't go to see a lawyer. Instead, you would have a duel and at that time it would be a duel with swords, and one of the two fighting would get seriously wounded or be killed. Well, he had to go with his father, who was going to have a duel with a relative about a piece of property, and his father killed his cousin, and he felt very bad about that. It didn't bother his father too much, though. So he went to a monastery for 40 days. That's what we'll be doing next month, won't we? 40 days of Lent to offer up prayer and penance for his father because he had killed a man. Well, while he was there those 40 days, he hadn't thought about this before, but he learned to love it. It was such a prayerful place. And he even started to offer up acts of penance. Well, it turns out some of the other monks weren't quite so serious about things. And he was very careful about keeping the rule, and he didn't approve when people broke the holy rule, but the other monks didn't really care, and eventually it was better for him to leave because they had a different way of seeing things, but he got himself a teacher who was an old hermit, and his name was Marinus, and this teacher was going to teach him how to pray, so that meant that you had to learn by heart the psalms, you had to memorize the psalms by heart, and they would sit together for their lessons every day, and his teacher had one of these long pointers, you know, you might see in the classroom. And he would recite his lesson. And if he made any mistakes, his teacher would whack him on his ear. Well, of course, it hurt. But he was so holy, he never objected. He learned there how to be patient. And eventually, he said to his teacher one day, excuse me, sir, but... When I make a mistake, would you mind hitting me on the other side now? Because I've about lost my hearing on this side. Can you imagine? Well, the teacher felt very bad. He didn't know what he was doing. And from then on, he never struck his student at all, which is probably better. Well, he went from there, that very, very strict training, to found a very strict order, because he kind of liked the idea of being strict, actually to offer up penance for people's sins. And the monks that were there would live by themselves and, and would fast and pray and keep silent for long periods of time. And he there, even though they were away from the world, some of his disciples had to go back to their own country and they preached. And that's how part of Poland and part of Russia and other nearby countries were converted by these very strict, quiet monks. Our Lord's always bringing good, you see, out of evil. 
eventually, he got to be friends with the emperor, and his name was Otto. And the emperor, Otto, wanted our saint to go back and to try again with his original monastery when he had to leave because they weren't strict enough. And he was an abbot there. That means he was in charge for a year, but it still didn't work out. And there were quite a few problems. And eventually, our saint got so angry and upset that he took his crozier, that's the you know, thing that the bishop holds, that's, that symbolizes the bishop as a shepherd. He had a crozier too. And he took his crozier right up to the emperor's throne and he threw it at the feet of his throne. And he said, I'm not going to be abbot there anymore. Those monks won't listen to me. Well, then he realized what he had done and he learned to be patient with himself as well as with others. You see, his whole life long, our Lord was teaching him one way and another. So you see, nothing needs to be wasted, children. We waste a lot of in our country and the way we live. For example, we don't want to waste food, but people do waste food. Don't waste your sins or other people's sins or the mistakes that we have or the problems that come up. They can lead us to the throne, not of an emperor, but to the throne of Almighty God's mercy and teach us something. The Holy Ghost is always teaching us. Sometimes he strikes us, but usually he doesn't. God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.